All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later on. For our first deck of the day here on this beautiful Sunday, which is going to be Mardu Aristocrats. So as you can see up here in the, the corner, this Mardu Aristocrats deck is a donation deck. Um, so we had a donation to, to play uh, this deck if you'd like to donate for your own deck. Um, there's a lot of information about that on my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash ToddStevensMTG, if you'd like to see a deck played on a stream. So the big thing that's a little different Hmm. I was going to say the big thing that's a little different, but then that's using the word big and little to describe something in the same sentence. That's not the best. Anyway, something that's uh, different here is is we are pretty aggressive as we have heroic reinforcements, which is nothing that, which is something that I have not used too much with like trying out Pitiless Pontiff and Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Um, so it'll be pretty interesting to see how, how this works. Uh, it's certainly an incredibly powerful card. So um, that'll be... That'll be uh, pretty interesting to see how that does, and also with like uh, with light up the stage. Uh, we'll see if we were able to trigger the spectacle on this and get a couple cards out of it. Um, sideboard looks like we have lots of discard, some duresses, drill bits, and graths, um, and some more removal, and then like theater fours to stick around as a a different kind of permanent to stay on the battlefield. Um, Couple unbreakable formations could be good in the sideboard. I could, I could maybe see that. Protect from Kaya's wrath. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what we got here. Mardu aristocrats. So Sunday, the uh, your pack rewards reset, so we can win some packs today. So that's certainly good. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? So the computer surgery went well. Um, I got the fan. I, you know, I found which fan it was, um, the CPU fan, and, and yeah, it was not. It was like hardly spinning compared to all the rest of them and everything. And so, uh, got that taken out, got that replaced. The new one's working. So all good. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's it, as far as. Um, as far as like the problems with like the stream lagging here in the in the past, but um, I'm still a little worried because like my stream uh, bit rate, stream health bit rate is listed as uh, like 1900 right now, and I and you know I think it should be more like the 3000 instead of the 2000 range, so we'll see. Um, let me go hero against the Esper deck. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> You're not a bad person for playing mono red. Not a bad person for just playing some mono red. That's perfectly acceptable. I have faced a curious choice. I have faced a curious choice. Um, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and use this reinforcements and kill the Karn. Just get that thing out of here. Be better prepared next time. Um.
Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna I'm gonna get Judith in, in play underneath a counter spell. Um over playing Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Because if I just Let's play Priest slow. and Gutter Bones and try to like play Judith to increase their power to attack like the following turn, they can just um you know counter Judith and then I, I really don't have very much pressure on the battlefield. We will meet again. We need to uh we need to stop drawing lands. Silver three at the moment and one week left to reach gold, but I have ladder in anxiety. No, there's no reason to have ladder anxiety. It's okay. You know, like, you know, if you don't advance and you're at silver three, uh, at the end of the week, there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. If you make gold, then that's awesome. You know, you reach your goal and, uh, <clears throat> you know, and you can be really proud of that. Uh, if you don't make it, it's all right. You have next season to, to try and, um, and continue on. So our opponent did keep all three on top from pre pre cognitive perception, which is probably bad for us. I was even thinking that too. I was thinking this is probably, I was even thinking that. So I was thinking like this is probably greedy to wait till post combat for light up the stage. Um, Uh, because we have things like Judith and heroic reinforcements and all that kind of stuff. So now it's like, hey, Maskalar. Thanks for thanks for checking in, and I hope you enjoy movie night tonight. Um, so I can I can resolve heroic reinforcements for sure right now, but then my creatures are just one ones. Just like playing two one ones. Trust me, no time for a How many lands does our deck have? Twenty three. We only have twenty three. That's already nine of them. Nine out of eighteen cards. That's not a good ratio. So we got time for plan B. We only missed out on one one one. By waiting on heroic reinforcements, we would have had two one ones on the battlefield. We, we only need to move we get one one one, but we also traded with the absorb in their hands, so we also, we also got that absorb out of their hand. Not being as Canton it's a fairy from here with a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2 two, two. just not possible all right dress drill bit um usually I'd really want theater but it's I guess they kind of have to have mortify I think it's still probably worth it um do I want playcrafter or eldest reborn do I want either one of those Priest out. 
So many threes. Of course, these can be ones. But we need a we need removal for Lyra still in. We can't sit back and, and not play removal for Lyra. Nothing in here is like an obvious cut. Uh, Footlight Fiend is the least powerful of the cards. Yeah, I'll take out Fiend. <laughs> you could just cut a bunch of lands. Obviously, I have too many of those. Okay, I may take out a couple of heroic reinforcements. No, I haven't gotten a new chair. I'm gonna take out one Judith. Judith isn't like really a hard card for our opponent to deal with, and you know, with it being legendary, we can run into some problems having a bunch of them. Yori Cattell with the uh, subscription. Thank you so much, Yori Cattell. I really do appreciate that. Um, hmm. Not the best of hands, but I think it's doable. I like the Tithe Taker on turn two. Um, Tithe Taker can hopefully trigger our light up the stage for turn three. Hey, DJ Polly B. Happy Sunday. Yep, he's laying up on the bed. Yep, he's just laying up there sleeping. Oh, yo, yo, it's so nice. Good to be back. Good to be streaming again. Need to get in streaming shape again. Um. All right, let's hit with this, and let's do light up. Kind of see what we want to do. Um, I don't think it's heroic reinforcements time. Teferi and Kaya's Wrath. <clears throat> so next turn, if, if we draw land, we can Gutter Bones and Reinforcements and attack for a bunch, and then the next turn, Reinforcements again, and basically make my opponent draw a draw a sweeper like the following turn or the dead right gutter bones doesn't get to attack because it enters tapped right forgot about that um i did replace the fan in my computer and so um this is keep up the pace so that fan is working now um And we're all good to go there. I'm hoping that's the only thing that was uh, <laughs> more like lazy bones. <laughs> Entering it all tapped. I'm hoping that's the only thing that was uh, wrong. Hey, nerd girl. Good morning. Um, anything different? 
Maybe just more of the same. I kind of want to play Eldest Reborn. Maybe I should play Play Crafters instead of Mortifies. No, we'll keep Mortify. I like Mortify destroying Azkanta. But Play Crafter does get rid of, like, Karn and Teferi. Yeah, actually, let's get Play Crafter instead of Mortify. Let's go and do that. We don't need to kill Azkanta. Uh, Deckmaster should be working. As far as I know, everything here, it, it looks like it's working. The hand was kind of close. Um... Okay, you're good. If if that land was like an untapped land where I could have had like gutter like if it was a blood crypt instead of dragon skull summit where I could have could have had gutter bones on turn one and then turn two had light up the stage maybe, but then again I don't even know if light up the stage is like the kind of card you want to be playing on turn two most of the time anyway. So why is the deck named Aristocrats? Um, it's be, uh, named after Cartel Aristocrat, which is a card that's very similar to Pitiless Pontiff um, from the previous Ravnica block, that there was a very popular uh, deck uh, similar to this built around Cartel Aristocrat, where you'd sacrifice your own creatures uh, for profit. And so you play like a bunch of little creatures that made their removal kind of bad. You know, you have a bunch of creatures like you know, like, for example, Tithe Taker here makes, like, their removal spell kind of bad. Like, they, they trade one for one their removal, and we still have a creature. All right, so I'm going to see if they have another Mortify. I'm going to play Tithe Taker and Drill Bit before I play Theater Pours. I want to play this Drill Bit first and see if they have another Mortify to destroy. Okay, they don't. Hmm. Now I wish I would. I would have. I wish I would have played theater. Uh, looking at this stuff. So Kai's Wrath's the easy thing to take, but I don't think I actually really wanted to take Kai's Wrath. I think I want to take Teferi. Because Kai's Wrath is just going to kill a couple creatures. Dang it. But, like, how they can win the game is, like, the card advantage that Perception and Teferi give them. The Theater of Horrors was, like, my, my main plan here. That Thought Erasure was a really good draw for the opponent to take the Theater of Horrors. That was a really good draw for them. Play Tithe Taker. Yeah, I guess so. Because the next turn I'm just going to be replaying, going to be buying back Gutter Bones and replaying Gutter Bones. Yeah, Teferi being able to deal with the Theater Fours was something that I could have seen them. Doing well with. I don't think auto tap did anything to hurt me at all. Yep, 
You, you can't get Gutter Bones back after Wrath. Gutter Bones only returns... Like, I mean, I, I have to activate the Pontiff anyway. I wasn't going to have two mana, but you can only do that if the opponent lost life. Yep, all good, all good. Nothing is ever truly lost. All right, so Moment of Craving takes out Pontiff. They go up to six. Unfortunately, I cannot sac I cannot have Pontiff sacrifice itself. And I'm I'm not casting the duress and letting them absorb it. They had the mana for absorb. I'm not gonna let them cast the absorb there and gain three life. I'll make use of that later. I'll give them the thought erasure. I don't want to give them more mana. It would help if we would draw another threat. That would help. Teferi and Perception? Ugh. Why is their last card Teferi? Yeah, we may be dead here. Choice. Looks like we're dead here. We need something to follow up that Tithe Taker. Uh, and just didn't draw anything for that. You know, drew like now f four lands and, and a duress over the last five draws. And that's just not going to do it. Really, that um, that one thought erasure to take my Evil to take my theater of horrors is army. really bad for us. Some solutions must be built. Just, just kind of flooded out in both games that we lost there. It's pretty unfortunate. All right, 0 and 1. <laughs> opponent could have crashed. That, that was basically our line to win. There was the opponent, um, you know, disconnecting or something like that. All right, what do we got here? Teamer amulet. I would play the, the third search risk canta, maybe even the fourth search risk canta before I would start playing treasure maps. Like I would play three search risk canta, one treasure map instead of two and two. As canta, when you're playing reclamation, wilderness reclamation that is, is just so incredibly valuable. It's it's awesome. It's certainly good enough to. It's it's a good enough card that you don't need to worry about drawing like two or three really. 
Um, so yeah, I would I would play three, maybe even four as Cantos. Um, then the other thing is, the other thing is, I think I feel like he would want more Chemisters Insights. That's another card that its power level just skyrockets with, with Wilderness Reclamation. Um, maybe like, maybe, maybe just to, to anticipate three Chemisters Insight. That seems pretty reasonable. Hey, Gatsby! With a deck donation. All right, any time tomorrow? Cool. So it's a Biomancer's Familiar deck uh, to reduce the activated abilities. Uh, so we have Adapt stuff like Growth Chamber Guardian, Incubation Druid. We have Shalai and Resplendent Angel. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Okay. Cool, so it's like Bant, Bant Familiar. Cool. All right, so what they do, duress. Yeah, Spencer, doing good, doing good. Um, last couple days I've had, um, I'll play Tithe Taker and Footlight Fiend. All right, so I'm playing these before Oh, I guess because a hero, I should have. I, maybe I should have played Pontiff. I just I don't want Pontiff to be able to die pretty easily. Anyway, um, but working on taxes, uh, fixing my fixing the computer, replace the fan, um, and just like some other some other stream updates uh, and everything, um, and good time to do it with like the the pro tour going on and everything. So, I had some updates to do, but I'm back. Hmm. And ready to go. Let's see. So I think just putting the pressure on the opponent uh, as much as we can is what I'm what I'm doing here. I'm not really worried about like my individual cards, how like they got to just block hero precinct one and kill it. We have them down to six. We have a whole lot of pressure on the battlefield. We're basically forcing them to have like some kind of sweeper, um, which you know Grixis doesn't play a ton of sweepers, but that's that's what we're kind of forcing them to have here. I hope they don't, of course. They could, you know, Ritual of Sit is probably the one that'd be that I'm the most worried about right now. All right, we got him. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see. I I still have a lot more to do with the taxes. Uh, so I have to go through and like, because that's the thing is I I'm not taxed, so I have to go through and look at like all my expenses for all like the traveling. Um, all that kind of stuff, everything I've spent throughout the year, um, and everything. And so I've done a lot of work with that over the weekend here, but I still have a lot more to do. Okay, you had no wild cards for us, can't I? I got you, Mass. I got you. All right, so Grixis stuff. Um, I'm going to play these cards. I'm going to trim a Mortify and Footlight Fiend. Hmm. 
Hmm. Nah, Playcrafter is great in this matchup. I'll get rid of Mortify. We can get rid of a Judith and get these get these Playcrafters in here. Yeah. I may regret not having Mortify in my deck. Um, I don't think you need like actual Active Treason in the deck, even though you have Pitiless Pontiff and stuff. Um, because there's just there's just going to be way too many times where you don't have Pitiless Pontiff or Priest of the Forgotten Gods. You don't have one of those two in play. And um, and you're just sitting with active trees and where your opponent's at like 18 or whatever, and you can take like their three three, and you know active trees is just not like worth an entire card. And so I think there's just too many times for that, because I mean instead of like active trees and then sacking their creature, you can just simply use a removal spell and get the same effect. This deck only has two priests in it. Um, I'm honestly really surprised they did not take Midnight Reaper there. Honestly, am. Well, Cutie Pie, this is a don this is a donation deck. This is not a list I put together. So I, I do think Priest is in, is insanely good, and I I would be hard pressed to not play four. But the list that we're playing here has two. So I was certainly worried about a counter spell there because our opponent knew about. Um, They knew about the heroic reinforcements, and they just sat back with four mana. So it's kind of telling me, like, counterspell kind of thing, so. That's pretty weird. They just played that Thief of Sandy into my Eldest Reborn, but we don't know their hand. They probably just didn't have a choice. May like... I guess their hope was likely that we just didn't have the fifth mana. Hey, London. Should be more, but 25 is still good. Hey, you're one of the very top subscribers, London. Thank you so much for that continued support. Number four on the day. Yeah, you are, you are amazing, London. Another good hand, you know, going one drop, two drop. And of course, I'm going to lead Hero Precinct 1 before Pontiff for multiple reasons. Not only do we get the creature... So we get the multicolor creature with uh, the help of Hero. Um, with like, you know, like when we cast Pontiff, we get the, the multicolor creature. But then also you really kind of want three mana when you cast Pontiff anyway. You want the extra mana uh, to be able to sacrifice a creature and give it uh, death touch and indestructible. You want to be able to protect it. Yep. That's the that's the thing about Thought Erasure. It's it's an amazing card and everything, but it does not it does not affect the battlefield. So um, that's why I like playing plenty of sweepers in my Thought Erasure decks, like my Grixis Thought Erasure decks. I like playing plenty of sweepers because when you're sitting there playing that kind of card, you're not affecting the battlefield. So you're going to be behind.
So we do have the ability to sacrifice the Footlight Fiend to the Pontiff and ping something for one at any time. Hmm. I'm not sure if I want to do that. Like, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to just do that right now. Or if I want to wait. I'm gonna wait. See if they curious obsession something, but then they could have by that time they could have dive down protection as well. Just having full light fiend on the battlefield is good though if we have like heroic reinforcements. Um, you know, which obviously we have two in the hand, but if we start casting heroic reinforcements, it's good to have, you know, another creature that's turning into a 2-2. Two -two. So I certainly considered playing Midnight Reaper here, but I don't really want my opponent to Essence Capture. Oh wow. That resolving was not what I was, what I was expecting at all. They really should have done that before I attacked and tapped a creature before I attacked. But I don't know if that saves them anyway. They could just be at 5 instead of at 2. Right. So I know the Curious Obsession gives them plus 1, plus 1. But I was saying that we would respond to the Curious Obsession that was cast by sacrificing the Footlight Fiend to deal a damage to the target. Uh, the Curious Obsession target. Um, that, that was like our option there. Um, hmm. So I don't think I want to play Mortify. Between Spell Pierce, Dive Down, Siren Storm Tamer, Mortify is just going to be trading down on mana every single time. I don't even think we need like that kind of effect. Like We could maybe play Cast Down, I suppose. I honestly don't mind Playcrafter. Usually they have like the one creature that they try to protect. With dive downs and everything like that, and Playcrafter making them sacrifice that creature. Like they play their creature, Curious Obsession it, try to protect it. I actually like Playcrafter in this matchup. I think that's better than Mortify. Um Duress is pretty good too. What am I taking out for duress? Am I taking out heroic reinforcements? And just playing duresses? That doesn't seem too good. Like, I like duress more whenever I'm playing. Like I think duress is better in this matchup. When you're playing a lot of interaction with the opponent and you want to take their spell pierce, their dive down, things like that, so that your interaction will resolve. Um, duress is very good. And so I almost always bring in Duress, because I'm basically always playing decks like that. But our deck is, is different. Um, yeah, Midnight Reaper is not the best. Yeah, that, that could be an option. Um, and you know we'll be on the we'll be on the play f for game three, and so we can reevaluate if we lose. Y'all are right. Reaper is probably our worst card. Well, our hand's awesome, but our we have the wrong lands. We have the 
the buddy lands instead of the shock lands. Everything else about our hand is good. Hopefully we just draw a shock land here. Take any shock land. We did not. <laughs> hey, it's all, all good, or Orwell fan. I'm, yep, I'm glad you're, uh, you're in here. All right, um, Fiend or Bones? Let's go Bones. Nice. And this is where Playcrafter would be insane. But we don't have a third mana, and we don't have a Playcrafter. I think I should have led with Priest over Hero to begin with on that other turn. It's not going to matter too much though if we can't can't draw some mana. down to seven. We at least have a chump blocker for next turn. Yeah, that's just that's just how magic is. Sometimes you draw lots of lands and sometimes you don't draw a single one. You know, it's just how it's how magic is, unfortunately. Alright, yeah, let's take out let's take out two Reapers for two cast downs. And maybe the third Reaper for a duress. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll cut the Reapers there for a couple cast downs and a duress. You know, that's not why we, having the Midnight Reapers in was not why we lost that game, but that's a sideboarding that uh, I think we could have done there the first time. So Orwell, you're saying that you usually watch the YouTube videos um, for other other people and stuff, and I was wondering if you watch if you watch any of my videos on YouTube also, and if so, if you have any suggestions or anything. Yeah, uh, DD stands for a donation deck. So it's a, a deck that um, a viewer donated to C Play. All right, so I like our hand being on on the play here for game three we'll see what our opponent's working with Ooh, that's a great draw step that is a great draw step one of the best draw steps that is Hero plus Fiend. I 
That's fine. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. that dive down helped him too much. It's nice of my opponent to, to give me a, a cast down tr target. I was going to have to just get rid of this cast down. That's nice of them. Well, let's put, it, put this back in the hand. Yeah, so I, I didn't att attack before sacrificing because of Trickster, and I kind of wanted to do that stuff and, and play Judith uh, with the extra mana and everything. I, I wanted to see what we would. I also kind of wanted to see what we'd hit with Light at the stage if we would find like heroic reinforcements, for example. I don't know. I just I don't know. If, yeah, I just kind of felt like like doing this stuff pre-combat to see what would have happened. I'll just stack with all of them. I think this one's in the bag for us. All right, two and one. Working our way back after losing our first match. Some unfortunate mana troubles. Just don't have the black mana. <laughs> yeah, million little. This is just my my normal stream time and everything. I'm just doing my normal normal stream stuff. I know that the pro tour is happening right now, but you know, it's my normal job. So, uh, I don't know. The computer is working okay. Like the the fans working good, like the fans working fine, but my the bit rate on my stream health is still not uh, um, as you know it's like two thousand kilobytes and I I want it to be three thousand so I don't I don't know if there's anything else that's causing problems. This is such a tough hand, you know. Like so we can cast the Footlight Fiends, but we can't cast these other three cards unless we draw a black mana. We have 16 black sources, and we're on the draw. I'll try it.
Mono Blue does seem to be the most popular deck these days. It's the deck that I've been playing the most recently. Perfect. Oh yeah, it's certainly a good deck. Um, we saw three co three copies in the top eight, I believe. Yeah, I think we're okay against Mono Blue. I'm not sure if... I honestly don't know who would be favored, our deck or Mono Blue. Probably, I guess probably our deck. But not by a large percentage. <laughs> da Bears with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the stream. Da Bears. Da Bears. Thank you so much. That's sub number five on the day. We will be cracking a pack open after this. And we just got a pack of Ravnica Allegiance to crack open. Thanks for the support there, DeBears. DeBears. Matthew Ori. Been eating crawfish a boiled. Nice. That's one of the, one of the foods that I actually have not... Um, I don't think I've ever had crawfish, I don't think. I don't think I've partaken in eating crawfish. Hey, Fizzle Joe. Thanks for resubbing there for the second month. So, so Matthew, so here's the problem with sacrificing. All right, so one, one we need we need two creatures and two other creatures in play to use priest ability. But whenever we do priest ability, the play that we want to do is have fiend kill the storm tamer, and then the ability kills the terramander. The problem with this scenario, though, is is that the priest is still a, this is a targeting ability. The sacrifice part it does target, and so they can sacrifice their siren storm tamer um, to counter the ability. So I I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, it says right there, any number of target players. Target players. We're targeting them. So I, I don't think that this is going to work, unfortunately. Unless, unless my opponent misses it. They missed it. It's gonna work. Yeah, they, they could have definitely sacrificed their Storm Tamer encountered this.
kind of need this body to sacrifice to the priest. I still have three cards in hand. You know, I don't I don't think our heroic reinforcements is gonna resolve, right? So like I don't I don't want to rely on having reinforcement tokens in play. It's not a very safe thing to rely on. The problem is though is all they need is a single creature. Another creature to be able to sacrifice. Like that. Or that. Ugh. That's gonna be tough. Ugh. Can't cast Judith. Why'd they have to have that spell pierce? We had to have them sacrifice the creature we're blocking. Or, or I mean, sacrifice the creature we're not blocking. That's what I meant. We had to have them sacrifice the wrong creature. They didn't do it. Alright, so let's get cast downs in. Two cast down, one duress, over three reaper. Um... And the three play crafter over the three mortify. And that's our deck. Still not exactly sure, sure if I really like these heroic reinforcements. Four mana seems like it's just way too much mana. Maybe we get another duress in here over one of them. We'll do that. We'll go down to three reinforcement. We'll try that. All right, did I save this? I did not. Okay, let's save this. Biomancer's familiar deck for tomorrow. All right, down a game now to Mono Blue. Um, get to be on the play here. Of course, winning a game three is going to be the hardest, but we got to get there first. Opponent's on six cards.
Let's just kill this. And attack. We need to stop drawing lands. Like, this is just way too many lands for us. Good. Not a land. Um... Getting this trigger before a before a trickster can do anything. If I just like play the or if I just attack with the hero precinct one first and they just play a trickster and block with it, then I don't get the extra token. Kind of thing. deck. Yeah, they're running low on cards, but so are we. Don't think we're going to win this. Nah, we're not going to win this. I think I... One, I don't, I don't know if it would have changed, but I think I didn't play this very well. I think the, especially this hero, I should not have cast this at all. And probably not even the Judith either. Maybe the, I don't really mind the Judith, but when they were just sitting with the two mana for Essence Capture and they weren't going to do anything else, like after I attacked with hero, I should not have, I don't think I should have attacked with, um... Or sorry, not attacked, but I really don't think I should have cast this hero on turn three and just let them use their mana there. Um, you know, we had lots of mana. I think I should have been patient and just passed the turn. problem of drawing eight lands to so your opponent's drawing four lands, you know, you draw twice as many lands. It's tough. Hey, Playcrafter. Got one of those. Alright, so Mardu Aristocrats, um, did okay. Our main, main reason why we're losing games was kind of our mana trouble. Um, you know, both of our games against Esper that we lost we flooded out really hard and then that game that we lost we flooded out really hard that's you know three of our three of the games in the two matches we lost were just to drawing tons of lands which I, th I think is just kind of a little bit of an anomaly like we're only a 23 land deck i do not think this should be 22 i think 23 is a, a very fair number to play um uh, as far as like maybe something to change about the deck i i don't like mortify i think mortify is kind of too expensive um, I, could, I, I could definitely just see these being cast downs. Um, I know Mortify is better against like Wilderness Reclamation decks, of course, um, but just in the current metagame with Mono Blue being so popular and also against Soul Tie with cast down being just as good, um, I think that the cast down and, and improving the two mana slot would be better than Mortify. Um, besides that, I really like Priest of the Forgotten Gods, of course. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of those. I really like that card. Um, we didn't get to do a whole lot with Pitiless Pontiff. Priest, of course, is not that good against Esper Control, though. Or Pontiff's a lot better against uh, against um, Esper Control. Um, yeah, overall, it felt 
the deck was uh, fun to play. And and I liked it. Um, Hero Precinct 1 was was pretty good for us. The extra bodies it was making everything was pretty good. So it was Tithe Taker. Reinforcements did its thing. So the you know, adding white to the deck was was okay. Um, you know, like these cards were good. Uh, we didn't really have colored mana issues. We did in a couple opening hands, but we drew the other color pretty early, if I recall, um, all the time. So like having the third color wasn't too big of an issue for us. Um, Light of the stage was good for us. We only have the two of them in there, but that that was certainly a good card for us. I don't like maybe maybe that's like a way to kind of mitigate the flooding problems if you're just playing like four light of the stage where you just have some more velocity to get through the deck. That could be something, but you, you kind of have to be worried about how many spells you want to play. You have to play lots of creatures uh, with this deck. Um, and yeah, that's a good point. Mortify does work better with Hero of Precinct 1 than Cast Down does. That's a good point. Um, there are a lot of spells in this deck that aren't... You know, there's not very many multicolor spells. You know, we were playing a lot of cards like Priest and Tithe Taker and Midnight Reaper where we were not triggering Hero of Precinct 1. But there we go, Mardu Aristocrats. Um... So if you're watching this later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.